this is the book I'm reading, like current, currently, <laughs> and the world according to Mr. Rogers. Important things to remember, of Fred Rogers. Back, if you could only sense how important you are to the lives of those you meet, how important you can be to those people you never, never even dream of. There is something of yourself that you leave at every meeting with another person. And like, I'm going to be reading it just for a little bit. <clears throat> this book is dedicated in Fred Rogers' memory to anyone who loved you and to me. This is actually a good book. Like, like there's some books that like, I only read just to fucking get it out. Of my way, and um, look, this is like I guess there's not really like they're like quotes. I guess it's a good ass book. It's really a good ass book. I'm gonna read it. <clears throat> Discovering the truth about ourselves is a lifetime's work, but it's a it's worth the effort. Some days, doing the best we can may still fall short. Of what we would like to be able to do. But life isn't perfect on any front. And doing what we can with what we have. Is the most we should expect of ourselves. Or anyone else. <clears throat> hey my voice trying to freaking. It's, it's fucking. I got like snot. <laughs> I got snot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Confronting ourselves. And giving them appropriate expression. Always takes strength. Not weakness. It takes strength to acknowledge our anger and sometimes more strength yet to curve the aggressive urges anger may bring in, to channel them into nonviolent outlets. It takes strength to face our sadness and to grieve them, to let our grieve and show our, our anger float in tears when they need to. It takes strength to talk about our feelings and to reach out for the help and comfort when we need it. Who you are inside is what helps you make and do everything in life. There is no should or should not when it comes to having feelings. They're part of who we are and their origins, origins are beyond our control. When we can believe that, we may find it easier to make constructive choices about what we do with those feelings. Whatever we choose to imagine can be as private as we want it to be. Nobody knows what you're thinking or feeling unless you share it. That is true. How many times have you noticed that it, the little quiet moments in the midst of life that seem to give the rest extra special meaning? There is a nurturing element to all human beings. Whenever they themselves have been nurtured, and it's going to be expressed one way or another. Nurtured? Nurtured. I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> when my mother or my grandmother tried to keep me from climbing too high, my grandfather would say, let the kid walk on the wall. He's got to learn to do things for himself. I love my grandfather for trusting me so much. His name was Fred McFeely. No wonder I included a lively elderly delivery man in our television neighborhood, whom we named Mr. McFeely. Part of the problem with the word disabilities is that it immediately should get suggest immediately suggest an ability to see or hear or walk or do other things that many of us take for granted. But what if people who can't feel or talk about their feelings or manage their feelings in constructive ways? What of people who aren't able to form close and strong relationships and people who cannot find fulfillment in their lives? Or those who have lost hope, who live in disappointment and bitterness and find in life no joy, no love. These, it seems to me, are the real disabilities. Yeah, that's really true. Like, I don't, like, I'm, I'm just saying that's, like, really true. It's not the honors and the prizes and the fancy outsides of life that ultimately nourish our souls. It's the knowing that we can be trusted. That we never have to fear the truth. That the bedrock of our very being is firm. <clears throat> All our lives we rework the things from our childhood. 
like feeling good about ourselves, managing our angry feelings, being able to say goodbye to people we love. In order to express our sense of reality, we must use some kind of symbol, words or notes, or shades of paint or television, pictures or sculptured forms. None of those symbols or images can ever completely satisfy us because they can never be any more than what they are, a fragment of a reflection of what we feel reality to be. I remember after my grandfather's death, seeing dad in the hall with tears streaming down his face. I don't think I have ever seen him cry before. I'm glad I did see him. It helped me know that it was okay for men to cry. Many years later, when my father himself died, I cried. Way deep down deep, I knew he would have said it was all right. See, I don't get the fact how, like, people think crying is not, like, like it's not okay. Like, bro, you can cry. You can fucking show all these emotions and shit, you know? Excuse my language, but, you know? Just open up to somebody or yourself, even. Just speak in the mirror, like... I'll be doing that shit. I'll be doing that stuff sometimes. I'll be doing Oh, uh, this one right here. This one right here really gets me. <clears throat> it isn't only famous movie stars who want to be alone. Whenever I hear someone speak about privacy, I find myself thinking once again how real and deep the need for such times is all for all human beings at all ages. Solitude is different from loneliness, and it doesn't have to be a lonely kind of thing. It doesn't. But they mean that solitude is different from loneliness, and it doesn't have to be a lonely kind of thing. You could solidify, like, you could, like, make yourself, like, you don't have to, like, be alone and be in solitude. You can, like, talk to people and all that, but, like, because I've done it. Like, you're there, but you're not there, you know? You have a good conversation, but you're not there. You, like, you build up information, and you just, like, keep it to yourself, and then you just, you make yourself smarter. Being, like, you know when people, like, all right, I'm done with this book. Not yet, but I'll make another video about it. But, you know, when you're, like, alone, and you're sad, or, like, something in your life happens, people fold. That you become weak. Or they don't find the knowledge they need for that moment. Me. Or anyone. Um, other people. They become smarter from it. Most people don't become smarter. They don't become wiser from being sad or depressed in those times. They just. They, they fold. And that's not the way to do it. You got to actually become smarter and learn from the mistakes or learn from the. The thing so you can actually become wise and gain intelligence and knowledge and like speak on it later on in life, you know. Yeah. Yep. Goodbye.